Paul Rosey ventured into exploring snakes, even facing the risk of being consumed by a green anaconda. While some admire these reptiles, others prefer to keep their distance due to the innate fear they evoke in humans and mammals. However, it's crucial not to stereotype all snakes negatively, as they are inherently fascinating. In the past, snakes were even more intriguing and terrifying. From the Titanoboa to the once largest serpent, here are the prehistoric snakes that could be nightmares. Titanoboa A really big snake called Titanoboa is believed to have lived around 58 million years ago, not long after dinosaurs are thought to have been extinct. Picture a massive, hot and humid swampy jungle with turtles having giant shells and crocodile relatives growing larger than 3.5 meters. Also, there were lungfish about 2 meters long, much bigger than today's Amazon lungfish cousins. Now imagine Titanoboa, a huge snake over 12 meters long and weighing more than 1,000 kilograms. It looked like today's boa constrictor but lived in the water like an anaconda. This giant snake could easily take down animals in its way. Scientists named it Titanoboa, and it's the largest snake ever. Discovering Titanoboa may tell us secrets about Earth's past and hint at our future. Studying it helps us learn about the conditions on the planet that allow such big creatures to exist. When the Seren team found Titanoboa, they hit the jackpot. It was as heavy as a small rhino and as long as a school bus. If you don't want to be squeezed by Titanoboa, remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons. It's like having a Titanoboa repellent. Gigantophis Garstini There's this gigantic snake called Gigantophis Garstini. It's the only member of the Gigantophis genus that ever existed, but now they're extinct. Before 2009, people thought of this snake as the king of snakes, the biggest one ever, until Titanoboa from Colombia showed up. Supposedly, around 40 million years ago, Gigantophis garstini lived in what's now the Sahara, specifically where Egypt and Algeria are today. A guy named Jason Head from the Smithsonian Institution studied the fossils of this giant snake. He compared its vertebrae with those of today's largest snakes. After this study, he thought this ancient snake might have been anywhere between 9 to 10 meters long. Just imagine that. If it was indeed 10 meters, it would have been more than 10% bigger than its closest living relatives. However, some later estimates based on more specific calculations think Gigantophis garstini was closer to 7 meters. We don't know much about this massive snake species. Mostly, we have a few fossils. In 1901, paleontologist Charles William Andrews shared the discovery of this snake and guessed it was around 10 meters long. He named it after Sir William Garston. In 2013, some folks found Gigantophis vertebrae in Pakistan that look similar to those from Egypt. How they're connected is still a mystery. Maybe this snake was a world traveler. Josh, This foundational snake once roamed Patagonia during the late Cretaceous period, specifically in a place called the Candeleros Formation. Unfortunately, it's extinct now. What sets Njosh apart is its unique feature, back legs. Unlike some present-day snakes, Njosh had well-developed legs that extended beyond its ribcage, with a pelvis that still connected it to the spine. Fossils of Njosh discovered in Argentina's Negro province apparently date back to an astonishing 90 million years. Njosh's head structure and backbone resemble other ancient snakes like Dinalicia patagonica and Matsoya. Certain neck and tail features of both Njosh and Dinalicia patagonica provide insights into the supposed evolutionary journey of snakes from lizard-like ancestors. What makes Njosh special is that it retained its sacrum, a set of connected vertebrae in the pelvis area and its pelvic girdle, features absent in today's snakes and all known fossil snakes. In the big snake family tree, most studies position Njosh as an early offshoot not directly linked to any snakes we see today. Paleophus colossus Now let's explore the world of sea snakes, around 52 species in total. Most of these creatures inhabit the warm waters of the Pacific and Indian Oceans, and they all come equipped with a venomous bite. Generally, they're relaxed and won't become aggressive unless provoked, so take a breath. But there's Paleophus colossus, an ancient sea snake that's fortunately extinct. 
The title for the world's largest sea snake used to belong to the yellow sea snake, which could stretch up to three meters. However, Palaeophus colossus is quite special. In 1999, researchers discovered a fossil of this enormous snake in Mali Sahara Desert, possibly from what was once the Trans-Saharan Seaway. Judging from the fossil, Palaeophus colossus could have been a whopping 12 meters long. That's 9 meters longer than our previously mentioned yellow sea snake. During the era of Palaeophus colossus and the drying up of the African Seaway, there were many other giant creatures around, including massive whales, elongated catfish, and sizable turtles. Sunage. Meet Sunage, a snake discovered relaxing in a dinosaur nest surrounded by three eggs and a baby dino. Examining this ancient snapshot, it seems more like a predator caught in action than random critters sharing the same hangout spot. The snake's position is intriguing, with its head resting on a coil and its body encircling a cracked egg, everything remarkably intact. This scene paints a picture of these creatures getting abruptly trapped and swiftly covered by sediment. Sanager apparently dates back about 67 million years, but the world only learned about it 26 years after its discovery in 1984. Donan J. Moab unearthed this fascinating specimen near the Indian village of Doi Dungri. Initially identifying the baby dino and remnants of the egg, Moab didn't delve much deeper. Later, Jeffrey A. Wilson from the University of Michigan revisited the find. To his amazement, it was evident that these were snake vertebrae embracing the baby dinosaur. Matsoya Matsoya is a snake from the past, having roamed the Earth apparently between 90 million to 2 million years ago, spanning from the late Cretaceous period to the Pliocene era. Its discovery traces back to Argentina in the 1930s, and it was named by George Gaylord Simpson in 1933. What makes Matsoya interesting is its role as a representative of a genus, not a single species. In simpler terms, it's like a poster child for the Matsoya Day, believed to be the ancestors of today's snakes. These creatures were globetrotters, leaving their mark supposedly over 88 million years ago. The big question is how these ancient serpents connect to our modern snakes, a mystery that remains unsolved. Matsoya was a 9-meter slithering giant, although some discovered specimens measured a mere 3 meters, making their actual size a bit of a guessing game. Its hunting style probably wasn't too different from today's boas. Picture Matsoya coiling around its dinner, applying a squeeze until the prey couldn't breathe, essentially suffocating it or triggering a heart attack. After that, it would leisurely swallow its meal whole and digest at its own pace. The Round Island Burrowing Boa the round island burrowing boa, scientifically known as Bolieria multicarinata, is sadly no longer with us. This snake was unique, being the only species in the Bolieria family and genus. Its last sighting was in 1975 on Round Island, and there are no known subspecies left. Typically reaching a length of around 1 meter, some captured individuals measured between 54 to 140 centimeters. It featured a light brown hue with blackish spots on its back and a pink belly adorned with similar spots. With a round head and body plus a pointy nose, it's likely that this snake loved to burrow. Its closest living cousin is the round island boa, or Cassaria dusumieri. Interestingly, this boa's entire habitat spanned just about 1.5 square kilometers, favoring spots with hardwood and palm trees. It mainly inhabited islands like Gunners Coin, Flat Island, Round Island, and Ile or Serpent in Mauritius. Its last known home was Round Island as of 1994. Unfortunately, the IUCN Red List of Threatened Species marked this snake as extinct, and by 1949 it was already a rare sight. After 1975, it vanished, and its demise was partly attributed to invasive goats and rabbits munching away at its habitat leading to soil erosion. Wambi Wambi was an old snake from Australia that lived a long time ago. It was part of a snake family called Motsoidae. These snakes weren't like the pythons we know today, they were good at squeezing their prey. The first evidence of these snakes in Australia comes from South Australia, and the snake found there was named Wambi narancensis. The name Wambi comes from stories told by Aboriginal people about a dreamtime snake sometimes called the Rainbow Serpent, who was believed to create important parts of the land. 
These snakes became extinct in many places around the world, supposedly around 55 million years ago, but in Australia, new kinds of these snakes kept appearing. The last ones we know about disappeared supposedly around 50,000 years ago. Wombi snakes were not huge. The biggest ones were about 4 to 6 meters long, and they didn't have venom. Instead, they ambushed their prey, coiling around them and squeezing them until they couldn't breathe anymore. Despite their tiny heads, they were still effective hunters, especially in Australia. Pachyrachus Pachyrachus is an old snake with a name that has a bit of an ancient Greek style. The name Pachyrachus comes from two ancient Greek words, Pachus, which means thick, and Rachus, which means spine. This snake is special because it had real back legs. It was found in a place called Ayut near Ramallah in the West Bank. It wasn't very big, just over 1.5 meters. There are signs that Pachyrachus was a marine snake. Fossils of Pachyrachus were found in marine limestone and its rib and vertebrae bones were thick, helping it swim in the ancient Cretaceous seas. Pachyrachus is part of a unique group of three snake types from the Cenomanian era that had hind legs. While some modern pythons and boas have tiny leg-like spurs, Pachyrachus had small legs with actual hip, knee, and ankle joints. A snake expert, H.G. Cogger, talked about Pachyrachus in 1979 and 1980, pointing out its interesting mix of snake and lizard features. Tetrapodophis This snake has a pretty fancy name, no lie. It breaks down to four-footed snake in Greek. This ancient creature lived in Brazil a long time ago during the early Cretaceous period. Here's the interesting part. It looks like a snake, but has four legs. Now, some experts think Tetrapodophis might be one of the early snakes, while others disagree. Let's talk about its legs. They're not very long, and it seems Tetrapodophis didn't use them for walking or digging. Instead, these legs look like they could grab onto things, kind of like a sloth or certain birds. Some even say its spoon-like feet might have been useful for grabbing prey or, surprisingly, for snuggling with mates. Yep, this was a snake that liked to snuggle. Some believe that this snake-like body has evolved many times in the Squamate group, creating legless lizards like the European slow worm or the odd worm lizard bipeds. They are believed to have lost their legs but kept the front ones. However, real snakes are believed to be a unique result of these evolutionary experiments. Tetrapodophis has some features seen in other legless lizards, but only snakes have a special combo of features. This includes backward-pointing teeth, a single row of belly scales, a unique way their vertebrae connect, and a relatively short tail compared to lizards and crocs. All these features suggest that Tetrapodophis is more like a snake, even though its legs might make you raise an eyebrow. Baby snake fossil found in amber Scientists have made a fascinating discovery, the oldest baby snake fossil found in amber from Myanmar. This tiny snake, named Chalfis myanmarensis, roamed the earth even before the T-Rex, they claim. The fossil is supposed to provide insights into snake evolution, revealing V-shaped bone spurs on its tail vertebrae that likely protected an artery and helped early snakes maintain balance after supposedly losing their legs. Although the fossil is missing its skull, leaving some mysteries, the finding hints at the possibility of more snake fossils waiting to be discovered in Burmese amber. Dinalicia A prehistoric snake from the late Cretaceous era in South America provides valuable insights apparently into the early evolution of snakes. With its elongated body and 24 vertebrae, Dinalicia exhibits key snake-like features, contributing to the ongoing debate about the origin of snakes whether on land or in the sea. Despite suggestions of an oceanic connection, Dinalicia's inner ear structure aligns more with land-loving squamate snakes, adding complexity to our understanding of supposed snake evolution during this era. Dinalicia's fossilized remains are crucial in unraveling the mysteries of prehistoric snakes and their fascinating history. Eupidophis This snake lived during the late Cretaceous period, it's believed, and its fossilized remains were discovered in Lebanon. Eupidophus is particularly interesting because it displays characteristics of both modern terrestrial and marine snakes. The name Eupidophus suggests its unique features, translating to well-footed snake in Greek. The fossil evidence indicates the presence of small hind limbs with well-formed ankle and toe bones, 
a feature uncommon in modern snakes. This raises questions about Eupodophis's lifestyle and whether it spent time on land. Despite the hind limbs, Eupodophis also had adaptations suited for aquatic life, such as a streamlined body and well-developed tail fin. This duality makes Eupodophis a significant specimen in understanding the supposed transitional phases of snake evolution. The discovery of Eupodophis provides valuable clues about the ecological diversity and adaptations of ancient snakes, showcasing the complexity of their journey during the late Cretaceous. Coniophis precedence Coniophis precedence is a prehistoric snake known from the late Cretaceous period, supposedly around 85 million years ago. Fossils of Coniophis precedence have been discovered in North America. This snake is of particular interest to paleontologists because it provides insights supposedly into the evolution of snakes during a time when these reptiles were still adapting to their environments and developing characteristics seen in modern snakes. The name Coniophis is derived from Greek where konios means dust or powder, possibly referring to the snake's small size or the fine-grained sediments of the area where its fossils were found. As with many ancient snake species, the details about its appearance and behavior are somewhat limited due to the incomplete nature of the fossil record. Nonetheless, the study of Coniophis precedence contributes valuable information to our understanding of the supposed evolutionary history of snakes. Somophis odysseus Dr. Georges Jalis, a scientist from Greece, found something exciting in southern Spain while studying old things called fossils. He discovered a snake from a really long time ago, and he named it Somophis odysseus. This snake probably traveled a lot from Africa to Asia, like a famous traveler in a story by Homer. Somophis odysseus is believed to have lived around 5.5 million years ago, a time when something big is supposed to have happened in the Mediterranean Sea. It dried up in parts, turning into a bit of a desert. Somophis odysseus was there during this interesting time. This ancient snake is a bit different from today's snakes, especially in its bones, but in terms of size, it's similar to some snakes we know. Can you imagine all the fascinating snakes that lived in the past? Share your thoughts on snakes in the comments. Also, explore other intriguing content displayed on the screen.